Good morning, folks. Uh, before we begin, I just want to give you a couple of bits of instruction because it's a little bit different than it normally is because of, of the precautions for COVID. And that is mainly having to do with um, sharing your Holy Communion. That actually is going to happen after the final blessing when we are all done. And what I will do is sanitize my hands and I will be basically where the casket is right now. And you'll be dismissed starting at this section and work our way around church. And after you receive, you can simply head right out the door and then we will join you when everything's done. Um, but that's where it's, it's a little different. And if you haven't experienced it, you might be wondering what's going on. We haven't forgotten much. But if you would, please stand and we'll begin our meeting. In the life-giving waters of baptism, our brother ends up dying with Christ Jesus, so that he can also rise with him to eternal life. On that same day of his baptism, Enza clothed himself in Christ. When the Lord comes again, may he be clothed in glory. Then Annette, then Amy, then Wendy, and 
finally Beth. My grandfather told my dad that he should have called Wendy enough. <laughs> because four was enough, but my dad said that the day each of the kids were born were the best days of his life. So five it is, and we have Beth to thank for that. My dad's two favorite pastimes were golfing and painting. He was very good at both. If you didn't know how good he was at golf, in 1975, we played 18 holes of golf and ends ahead, 400 par 68, even with a double bogey. He was almost a scratch golfer at one time. My dad taught me golf. He taught me that the swing was more important than a new golf club, and that many hours of practice in the backyard were more important than the games of golf on the golf course. On my dad's 80th birthday, he played 18 holes of golf with me and two of his friends. On the first hole, his drive went into the trees and two doves fell out of the tree. <laughs> After realizing what had happened, we felt bad for the doves and he commented, I got two birdies on one hole. <laughs> He was also an avid painter and knew it was the details that made the picture good. He painted pictures for all his kids and grandkids. Some of them are over there. If you didn't get a chance, go look, look at them. At Christmas time during our white elephant gift exchange, his paintings were the most traded and prized present. My dad had a sweetness, had the sweetness of a country boy but the class of a big city boy. As a teenager, he worked in a clothing store. He bought clothes for my mother back in the mid 50s and got in trouble from my grandmother because they were not married yet and it was not appropriate. He had good taste and was impeccably dressed. Even in his 80s, many of his friends were amazed and wondered if his hair would ever go gray. This is a famous quote. It's not how long, but how well you have lived. My parents lived well. They traveled with lots of friends from Michigan and Arizona, were very active in the church, both had very good careers, and had a large family to share life challenges with. Dad lived a very good life, but it was his time. Mom, I think all my sisters and my wife would agree the energy of life is strong with you. Although we are sad with the loss of my dad, grandpa, husband, he set a good example for all of us and he would want you to continue to live your life. Thank you. God to gather our brother Enza to himself. O oh Lord, listen kindly to our prayers as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant Enza also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as we listen to God's Word. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill, and a time to heal. 
a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the law, who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. our own mortality. As hairs turn gray, or as they fall out, we begin to think of things like that. And one of the great privileges I've had as a priest over the years is the ability to be with families as they grieve the loss of a loved one. And oftentimes people think that would be a horrible place to be. But in the midst of grief, you can also see the healing hand of God at work. And you can see the hope that comes from Jesus' promise of life with him. And I was thinking, I probably have done in the neighborhood of 600 to 700 funerals over. And each family deals with the death of their loved one a little differently. The way we express that grief and the way we talk about the one we're going to miss. And every once in a while, you have one that jumps out at you. That you could really see God's grace and abiding love at work. Well. Enza's death and his family are one of those examples. Because as we sat and talked and began to plan this day, everybody in the room, even though we had masks on, you can tell, everybody in the room had a smile on their face. And that smile wasn't about 
missing the seriousness of his thoughts. But the smile was a recognition of the love that they shared with him. A love that's eternal. And you could see as stories were shared and as memories were recalled, they were good memories. They were memories of family things, of marrying a sweetheart, of love. And when we talk about eternal life, we're talking about the love of God. And that love is eternal. And while Enza is resting in the loving embrace of God, his presence is still with all of you, in particular with his wife and his children and grandchildren. Because love is eternal in the same way that God is eternal. So when that scholar posed that question, what must I do? Jesus gave him the example of the Good Samaritan. Because in the action of the Good Samaritan, we can see that love abundantly clear. And it became clear for me that Enzo's love for his family was and is eternal. And that's why they can smile when they talk about him, even in death, because they know that love.
Pray that our gifts may be seen as acceptable to Almighty God. O Lord, look favorably upon our offerings, so that your departed servant Enza may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son 
and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to You, so that we may obtain an inheritance with Your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and cheer your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Enzo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are. We shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to shed on your life. Only say a word, and my soul shall be. O Lord, grant that your servant Enza, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. For Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
to your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Enza in this sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.